All mm -hmm. Saints set for Saturday's supplementary governorship elections in Adamawa and Kebi states as the country again focuses on the electoral body INEG to conclude the polls. Anxious voters await the final determination of the inconclusive elections. Our ICE correspondent Omo Bazoye takes a look at what's at stake in the two northern states. On Saturday, all eyes will once again be on the governorship race in Adamawa and Kebi states in supplementary elections to finally decide the eventual winners. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, had declared the first round of elections on March 18 inconclusive following violent disruption of the polls in some parts thereby setting the stage for a second round of votes in the two northern states. In Adamawa, in the northeast of the country, incumbent Governor Amanda Fintiri of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, will go into the supplementary polls balled by a merging lead of 31,249 votes. His closest challenger and candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Senator Aisha Binani, will need to put up a more spirited effort to obtain the gap if she hopes to put her name in the record books as the first elected female governor in Nigeria. It's a tall order for Binani, but many women groups are urging her to push on and count on their support. A total of 37,706 votes are at stake in 69 polling units where the supplementary elections will hold in Adamawa State. Elsewhere in Kebi State, APC candidate Nasio Idris and PDP candidate Amino Bandi will square up. They will go into the supplementary elections with APC already having 388,258 votes and PDP polling 342,980 votes. APC will be going into the race with an advantage of 45,278 votes in its kitty. There are 91,000 outstanding votes in the Kebi supplementary elections, which cut across several registration areas in 20 of the 21 local government areas of Kebi State. All eyes will also be on the Independent National Electoral Commission to ensure that the supplementary elections for the governorship, federal and state constituencies are improved upon, with results swiftly declared and uploaded on its results viewing portal so that the 2023 general elections can finally be concluded. Omo Bazwai, Arise News. Arise Director of News and Politics, Editor Somna Sambo, joins us now to unpack and help us understand uh, as we prepare for this uh, supplementary elections in Adamawa and Kebi State. I recall um, Binani had argued that in Adamawa State there was no need to call for a supplementary uh, you know, uh, election in the first place. Well, it a, a, a <laughs> yeah. no, well, it's actually a sub supplementary, supplementary election exactly. supplementary. Uh, because yeah. we have the substantive election, but mm. of course we could not uh, conclude the election because of the difference. Yes, uh, so the governor, uh, Amado Fintri, already has a 30,000 lead. Mm. And then, of course, uh, you have uh, uh, Senator Binani following uh, uh, behind. And, uh, you know, there have been these accusations uh, between uh, both the APC and PDP leading to the wreck you know, being asked to resign and all of that. Some people are asking him to stay aside, but of course he's still there and uh, INEC hasn't removed him. So what we expect INEC to do is to ensure that uh, these uh, uh, close to 40,000 uh, uh, votes, votes that, that are still remaining, mm. uh, uh, you know, the elections are held creditably. And then we have a situation whereby INEC itself ensures that the results are uploaded on time. And then of course, you know, there's confidence building measures because uh, ahead of the uh, Saturday polls, a lot of people are beginning to say that there is no need for them to come out and vote because of what happened, you know, in previous elections. So, but we've not seen a lot of political mobilization, right. both from the political parties that are complaining. It's not the mm -hmm. job of INEC alone to go and mobilize people. Absolutely. You need to give people a reason why they should we come should and, vote and vote for you. Yeah, so the major problem we have is that political parties just nominate candidates and they just stop there. Or just hold some, um, you know, 
theatrical mm -hmm. events in, in city centers or maybe local government headquarters and that's it. But you have this polling unit spread in different places and you know that for a local government has been the one that you know has been causing lots of uproar here mm -hmm. and there. And then of course the, the thinking here is that if INEC is able to organize this election speedily, yeah. ensure that the logistics are delivered on time, I think by 2 p.m., I mean, the, the entire election should have uh, come to a close. And then, of course, collation by 4, 5 p.m., the results should have been out. But, of course, if we don't have logistics going out on time, then there's going to be a problem. So yeah. the onus is on INEC and the political parties to see how between now and um, Saturday, they are able to build some, you know, confidence in voters. Because a lot of people, you know, especially within that inconclusive environment, are not so satisfied with what happened. And you may just have just like 5,000 or 10,000 people coming out. And if that happens, then what was the need for the you, inconclusive you, you, election? You know, Somla, you've raised a very valid point mm -hmm. here because uh, nothing stops them from also making that kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation or campaign uh, at least uh, uh, until 48 hours uh, to the uh, D-Day for the supplementary yeah. elections. But again, it, it, it falls on the political parties as highlighted by you. But again, let's talk more about INEC because this is uh, uh, almost like a, you know, a singular election now for INEC to redeem its image. We've always had this conversation. This is about, this yeah. election is about INEC. So what more do we expect? You know the terrain. So when INEC speaks about uh, logistics, what are the challenges? Well, the challenges actually are enormous. But if INEC has four years to plan for this election, then what excuse does INEC have to be given every now and then as if these challenges are new? We've been holding elections since 1999, and then institutional memories would have meant that, uh, you know, INEC knows all the dark spots, all the problematic areas here and there. And then with elections, we keep on improving. Uh, like, for example, in Kebi here, I don't know why we couldn't conclude election because Kebi was a little, it was largely peaceful, unlike uh, Adama where you could actually see that the race was very close. In Kebi, you can see the gap, and then there are 1,000 votes that are outstanding there. You can see the candidates, and uh, it's majorly uh, APC and PDP and there. And then you discover that uh, uh, from the issues that we have seen at hand, uh, there was no reason if this election was properly uh, you know, uh, conducted that these elections should have led to it being declared inconclusive. It's mm. because of the logistics failures of INEC. And that's why people are beginning to say that, look, shouldn't we even start thinking of, you know, outsourcing the logistics arrangements for election away from INEC? So that, right. yes, they do all the accreditation and all of that and so on. But the ideas of getting the electoral materials to these places, we are sourcing to other... Uh, an agency of government logistics, or maybe uh, to a logistics, logistics company, company and so on. Yeah. The INEC has the Air Force which complements it. And of course, the entire Nigerian military, all branches of the Nigerian military and the are money. meant, yes, and the money, uh, they are all supposed to, you know, support INEC during this election. But sometimes you wonder, if, you know, if, as if we're not learning from some of the elections that we've previously mm -hmm. held. So this Saturday, INEC must not give reason for people not to come out. Because once people go to the polling units and they see that electoral officials are not there by 8 o'clock or 9, yeah. they'll start going back to their houses. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. INEC, must be, INEC officials must be there on time. The ad hoc workers must be paid on time so that they show up on time. And of course, the beavers machines, we shouldn't have the, 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 the situation whereby the Americans, they were leaking certain documents also and telling us that some batteries of the uh, uh, you know, uh, beavers, beavers machines, machines were allegedly swollen. And so some of them didn't work in certain areas. I mean, there's no sort of embarrassment that we receive like that kind of leak, although the Americans are beginning to recall those leaks. But I can tell you that if it's being investigated by our own intelligence services and it's discovered to be true, INEC officials ought to have been punished because they did a mock election trial. Uh, yeah. yeah, they did a mock trial before the elections and all of that. Yeah, that's and true. There was there's one in a particular States. time which this, uh, you know, these uh, uh, machines are supposed to last. So mm. what really happened? The INEC ICT department also owes Nigerians an explanation. A lot of explanation. If the Americans are telling us that some of those batteries of the Beavers machines were swollen before election day and complaints were there and then nothing happened. Maybe the funds were not deployed as, you know, in spite of the fact that funds were actually released on time. Almost 400 billion uh, yeah, and I, the elections are getting now expensive, but Nigerians are not getting commensurate returns. returns. If it were a private company, wouldn't you have been asking oh, questions? Some, some heads would be rolling by <laughs> I now. I mean, by now, would have been asking tough questions. Some now, there, 
I mean, you have election litigations right now. How will this supplementary election affect the issues of numbers of you know uh, that the the different political parties for Adamawa, for example, I can tell you that it's going to end up in court because I mean they are arguing here and there, back and forth about the figures, the APC and the PDP. Uh, but we already have seen that in all states of the federation, in one way or the other, people are submitting one petitions either for the federal or state uh, constituency elections or for the governorship elections or the presidential elections. Now, uh, it also points back to what INEC ought to have been doing. INEC ought to have been giving us elections that will lead to lesser lit uh, litigation. litigation. Because if they are free, uh, if the elections are free and the candidates have seen that the procedures and backed upon by INEC, and then, of course, other institutions of government have been done very well. A lot of people will not go to court. Why would you go and waste your funds hiring lawyers and all of that in this period where there is no money? Yeah, but, but, INEC, but INEC itself, is actually, uh, you know, patting itself on the back, saying, look, there are actually fewer litigations, about 400 and something, compared to For now, that's because the elections previous, have not been concluded previous, uh, until, until we see the entire elections being concluded. Right. Because right now, the 2023 general election is still on course until the supplementary election is over on Saturday. The election is still on course. And that's why you would have seen the INEC uh, national chairman, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, being quiet. I mean, he's just been there because he can't say a lot. He can't actually grant interviews as to what really happened because the election is still on course. It hasn't been concluded. You know, so should we start looking at holding elections, all elections, just one day and get it done with so we can move on with that? Yes, lives. if we had done that, by now you would have known that a lot of political parties and candidates wouldn't have even uh, gone to court because it was a you know sweeping revolution that was happening on election day so there are lots of analysts and political observers uh, uh, some uh, members of the intelligentsia that are beginning to rethink that idea of holding elections in one day but if Anne cannot conclude two or three elections mm. that were broken very well uh, 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 on, on, the, uh, on particular days just think of the logistics nightmare that may happen if we have all in one day so we can do it. It's not as if we cannot do it. In but the reality is that, yes, do we have all the institutions that can support INEC to be able to do that? The biggest challenge that we have is with logistics. Once the INEC officials don't turn up, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in polling units on time, it starts affecting the time for the main elections or, uh, uh, you know, the collation. And so that's where we have a problem. Uh, with these devices that we've brought, we thought that there was going to be some huge improvement. Yes, there are some impro improvements. I won't really lie to you. Because if you look at the figures from 2003, where you have PDP winning 24 point something million, 2007, 24 point something million, then it keeps coming 2015. Let's close on uh, this uh, 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 And all of that. You see that gradually we're beginning to get the real figures of those who come out to vote, no ghost voters and all, all right. of that. Let's close on this, if you will. Uh, everything being equal, let's say INEC has learned its lessons. Uh, what do we Hopefully. expect looking at the elections in these two key, uh, states? At yes. what point should people be expecting the outcome of the, the, the election? Outcome. That's why I said if the logistics are, are, are got English. right, there is no reason why the election should not be concluded around 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. in terms of collation and all of that. But if we have logistics problem and people don't turn out on time or people turn out on time and they discover that INEC didn't bring the electoral materials mm -hmm. on time, then there's going to be a problem. And once collation begins to go into the night, that's where the magic happens. And a lot of people distrust the, 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 yeah. the institutions, the people and all of that. And then you see figures okay. coming out and being canceled. But the IREV will support the system. If they're able to do that on time and the results from the polling units right. are uploaded, I mean, even from your home, you can calculate the figures and then you arrive at the conclusion. Simple as ABC. Somna Sambo, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. As always. Man.